Hello, a quick paint over for Mr. Sayar. Let's see. Uh, don't usually have time to do these things, but I figure, you know, might as well share the knowledge. Uh, okay, cool. It's got this cool dynamic piece. You know, you got this uh, cool stuff going on, all these directionalities. You got, I think that's Vision, or is that an original character? I don't know. Spider Man? Uh, whatever. Uh, two heroes doing their thing. Um, one thing I could say is let me turn it black and white. Now, I did that by going to uh, View, Proof Setup, and under that I selected Custom, and I picked Working Dot Grain 20%. And now whenever I press Control Y, instead of it going CMYK, it goes black and white. Anyway, uh, so we have an OK read when we zoom out. I think we could improve that. Um, what I'm going to do is duplicate everything and uh, make one layer really bright. And the other, we'll duplicate it again and make it a little bit darker. So kind of kick the values down. So now we have two two versions. And if we turn the color back on, you know, these are the two different versions. And on the second version, I'm going to hold Alt and then click uh, the mask over, down over here. And uh, what I'm going to do is paint in areas that I want to be light. Right, so like uh, right here's the mask, and if I'm using white, it'll do that. Now we want a, a really good shape read, and we want it around our focal points. So our focal points are, you know, probably this guy. And I would actually just kick up the highlights there. Right, no, those are really sloppy. And I would actually uh, make it a bit brighter behind him over here on this side because that helps him pop out. And then I would actually just carve that and shape it into uh, a shape like that that points down to him. Uh, reason being because you have uh, this shape, that shape, and I just wanted one more like that to kind of complete uh, our, I guess, triangle. Things usually work well in, in, in when they come in three. Uh, let's pump these up. All right. And I think maybe if we have that continue down like that. And just a, an airbrush and overall just kind of make that area lighter. Um, this stuff down here, I'm not really sure what that is, but I, I don't think it's as important to worry about that stuff right now. I I'd, I'd recommend focusing on your value reads, meaning, you know, get these shapes to work uh, in terms of black and white, and then once you have those working for you, then you can um, sort of fill in the details of what those things might be. Um, so yeah, I would just kind of, and if you use the mixer brush tool over here on the, on the left, and you can actually, while you're in the mask, you can still blend those together like that. And so we start to have a more, more of a dynamic read there. Right, and yeah, all right. So um, let me flip it just to see how it is. Yeah, maybe put another line there. Anyway, so yeah, we're starting to get something working here. It's not too bad. Um, let me just do a bit of uh, massaging with these values. Now let's put the colors back on and see how that looks. Now it's a little better. Right now, if we compare it to the other one, the or the original, uh, it's kind. Of, it has a good punch, huh. punch. But it has, you know, has a good value punch. But I think this is more of a controlled. You know, you're like being specific with what, with where you want people to look. And I would actually kick up the saturation on this too, a little bit like that. Now that was on the color layer. Now if I turn off. The mask, it looks like that. We only want the parts that we wanted to show through. Um, oops, I was painting on the wrong thing. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Um, I'm going to talk about anatomy real quick. So I'm going to make a new layer. Um, whoops. Make it white. 
Now it's on top of everything. I'm going to lower the opacity so I can sketch on top of these. Um, and I want to kind of emphasize more dynamic poses. And uh, what I can recommend is this arm looks a bit stiff. So what I want to do is have a bend in the elbow as if it's going like that, like he's kind of you know, retracting back. And then his hand also feels kind of like <laughs> not, you know, action eats very like ah, I'm just gonna you know like flare my hand so we're gonna have the hands do something like this and here's a trick to draw hands you could draw a square um, and then you know put four dots for the knuckles and then you have a triangle here and then the thumb can kick out like that as another triangle All right and if you you know trace the anatomy it's like something like that uh, anyway that that's not the hand that I want to draw I'll, I'll get to that in a moment so once you have like a more dynamic wireframe, you know, maybe his, his other hand is going like that, or her arm, and like this. And I'd maybe tuck his head down like like this, so that you're not really seeing much of his head, because that's we don't need to see his face or anything. Um, it's not that big a deal. Unless your client is like, we have to see his face. Um, so his, um, his shoulders are good. I think maybe his spine could have a little bit more of an arch like that, you know, kind of break his back a little bit, you know. Um, maybe let's uh, make a stick figure for the legs as well. Uh, yeah, I'd make these maybe more like that, M more of a bend in the knee, and then maybe make this one straight, right? Um, well, maybe what you had is is, is all right. Um, okay, let's make this one like that, and then the other leg, like this. Oh no. See, it's trial and error, um, and you go through all these permutations just to kind of find the right, uh, the right configuration that, that works. Right, so we don't even see the top part of his leg because it's it's up. I'm implying that it's up there. I mean, I guess technically you could trace it out to go like that, but then you don't really have to. Um, now we have a slightly more dynamic, uh, maybe like this. You know me, I'm all about dynamics. And then um, let me push it up a little bit, and you you see this kind of. Um, uh, posing in, in a lot of comic books. So if we increase the opacity and make another thing, and then we trace on top of this, so we got the deltoids. Um, we could put an el like a little kind of wedge for the elbow, just to kind of act as a landmark, right? And then you have the tricep, which is like something like this, and it goes up like that. Then the deltoid goes into a muscle like that. And it's between the tricep and the, I think it's biceps brachii, is it Alice, uh, deltoid, okay, blah, 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 I don't know, I don't remember. Anyway, so the bicep is like this, all right, the tricep, but I used to think it was tricept and bicep with a T at the end, silly me, silly me, and I'm just drawing the wireframe wire of the muscles here. Okay. Now, uh, we know that the radialis bone comes like this, uh, depending on if it's rotated or not. And the other bone, okay, so if, ha if his arm is rotated or pronated is the correct term, and the bones would be twisted like this. And we know the radius is always uh, leading to the pinky. So, and the ulna over here is where the thumb is. So maybe, uh, something like that and there you go you start you start to kind of develop a, a nice hand um, then we could add the muscles and there's the uh, radialis muscles going like this or something like that um, something ulnaris yeah I gotta I gotta study my muscles again um, and then you know the, the general shape of that is like that um, right and then this uh, actually it, you know, kind of connects to the scapula. Um, well, I mean, we want to see the, the bracketing 
of the scapula because there's, there's another scapula here. Um, and, and these actually move depending on what the arms are doing. Uh, just, you know, move your whole arm around and you could feel your own scapula doing that. Uh, then you have the clavicle and a trapezius kind of doing something like this. Uh, yeah, which you already have. I'm just kind of emphasizing it. So same thing over here. If we put a little wedge for the elbow and that connects to the uh, triceps. <laughs> um, and we see the other side of the bicep and we got the uh, those two uh, radialis muscles on there is whatever the the forearms <laughs> all right um, and maybe just maybe he has a, this arm is a fist what are you doing Photoshop stap all right so a fist okay we have the the radius bulge thing happening here and we know the pinky is going to come out from that uh we're just going to draw a shape like this and fit the fist in there somehow uh, that that's a really really bad sentence <laughs> i'm gonna get in trouble banned from youtube all right um yeah yeah it's starting to make something whatever uh, you got to use reference for this stuff because then you'll start screwing up like I am here. I don't know what a fist looks like from this angle. Um, let's flip it. Eh, it's not too bad. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we've got the scapula. And then we got the uh, back muscles. The Baximus Maximus. Did you know it was called that? It's, it's not called that. That's a lie. Don't listen to me. Uh, anyway, uh, so, you know, do your anatomy studies so you can figure all this stuff out the same way. You know, just simplify things down. Um, the buttimus maxim. <laughs> uh, all right, anyway. Um, that, that, this is my, you know, this is, you asked for a crit, and this is what you're going to get. You know, crude, uncouth, filthy jokes. Um, anyway, so biceps femoris, you got these two muscles in the back leg and the quadricep coming out like that and uh, gluteus maximus happening here and then over here we're just going to see the gastrocnemius which is also the calf leg you know coming like this and then the bottom of the foot uh one trick to drawing feet um the trick is to actually not draw feet just draw shoes <laughs> right um learn how to draw shoes in every position and you'll be good to go. You know, just grab your grab your own shoes and put them right in front of you, and uh, you know, maybe some boots, and just kind of see what what they actually look like. You know, you you have the okay, not all boots look like that, but you know, you have this, and then you have uh, a place for your heel to go, which is right here, and then your top foot. I mean, the top part of your foot has to go in there, and then it comes down like this, and then your toes go there. And so when you draw actual shoes and stuff you 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 realize you have to uh take account for like the heel the the the, the tarsals aka the toes um because often when people draw feet uh, or, or shoes really they forget that there's a heel you know they'll just do that it's like bro like who who has a foot like that unless it's a cartoon and it's stylized but if you're trying to you know be real stick you gotta be all like yeah what up guys look at real anatomy anyway um yeah, so here's the uh, other calf muscle. You know, bottom of the shoe. And it's just indicated we could go in there and make it more perfect, but whatever. Um, neck muscles, you know. Has this uh, hair. Look at the little ears. Wait, it's going to be like that because he's kind of facing our our dude over there anyway so I would th this would be my suggestion establish a a good visual read in terms of um, value like you know what we did here so let's go to the start um, so value like that um, and I would push the color a bit as well um, and then a wireframe for some dynamic poses and then kind of <clears throat> what's it called um refine those 
the poses or whatever. And you know, you could easily just go in and repaint all this stuff. And I wouldn't sweat it too much about all the details. Like it's not, you know, it, it, what people notice is the, is the first reads, you know? And, and for yourself, whatever you wanna make, it's the first read that matters. And let's, let's just knock out this guy's silhouette so we can get a feel for what I'm talking about. And once you have a basic silhouette block and you can kind of just imply the shadows. And since we studied our anatomy, you can understand where the shadows go, you know. Um, it's pretty easy to figure them out once you know that, oh, this is this shape is like a football, and footballs are gonna have a shadow like this under there because well it's not gonna look like this or or like that. Like what why? What? But it's gonna be something like that. Please excuse my silliness. Well you don't have to, but Yeah, and then um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add some rim light on this dude <sighs> above these layers so we can kind of get some definition uh, of these dark things because these are dark against dark so you just want to kind of you know show his shape throughout by the way the Baximus Maximus is a stolen joke from Steven I stole joke. I stole, I stole it. We were at a museum once and there were these people looking at the statue um, and they were all gawking at it and Stephen whispers, he's like, that didn't the anatomy for this, you see that back? That's the Baximus Maximus. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, one thing that is kind of standing out to me is that the yellow um, is a bit bland and I would actually sneak in some orange and also even when I'm selecting the yellow it's in this gray-ish area and I like to kind of you know allow my colors to be up over here you know in these areas because um, it's saturated I mean you look at the difference between these two um, where this was what's there and then this is what the new color might be I don't know let's, let's try it out and see how it goes maybe something like that um, let's put this under here. Yeah, and already it kind of feels a bit nicer to look at because of um, just just these subtle, you know, color cues can make the difference. Because, um, you know, before it was a bit gray, right? And we don't want to have gray, muddy paintings, so. Um... I might even add some highlights on this dude, as if there's a, a light source, you know, coming from above. Let's just punch these up all the way like that. Make a new layer, set it to overlay, maybe blue. I'm not really sure what the original design of this character was, but I'm just kind of going with the flow. But I want to punch this blue up, so I do that. Uh, and, and of course, it looks kind of like a comic style, but if you want to make it more realistic, let's go ahead and flatten that. Um, you know, you can sort of blend all these shadows together using this mixer brush, and that way everything has a more realistic read. And you can, uh, you know, probably tone down the colors and stuff. Uh, personally, I prefer this. So, let's see what else. I think it's still a bit busy. I'm not. I don't really like this stuff down here. I'm just gonna bring the black and white back. Uh, 
I don't like that thing. Honestly, the best thing I could say is to keep your composition as simple as possible. So, um, a lot of this noisy stuff down here, uh, it's, it's good to have content in terms of background, um, but first establish a simple value breakup of where you want your, your viewers to look. Um, and then you can start adding your, your content in terms of like these spiky rocks or whatever they might be. Hmm. Yeah, I think the color is all over the place. I think, you know, these blue, yeah, yellows and greens, I think. You can unify all the colors by making a new layer set to overlay and kind of just doing that with uh, either yellow or orange or whatever color you want to dominate and just kind of paint over everything so make it more green and notice I'm like pretty zoomed out you know I'm not I'm not in there like you know I'm trying to make it perfect um, I'm just I'm all about that read that, that value read anyway that yeah so now that just separated the the two characters a bit more anyway so that's that's kind of my crit obviously it's it's not a perfect thing in 24 minutes but um hopefully that helps and let's do a little bit of color dodge there uh, maybe set that to orange and um maybe add some uh noise like this erase out then you'll be on your way but, um, yeah, so, you know, it's kind of gray, but it's definitely, it's definitely has, it definitely has, um, potential. So from that to this, you know, you, one of them has a more impactful story, um, with a few tweaks, right? So give that a shot. Remember value, uh, reconstruct the, um, the values in a way to have a very simple read, um, so that you're controlling where the focal point is and then, uh, you know, c d find, um, more dynamic poses and figure out some, some really cool lighting and yeah, you'll, you'll have a good time. All right. I hope this helped and you have a great day, all of you. And, um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, click, click.